Hello, my name is Dana Yance, Director of Technical Marketing at Elicity, and I'd like to welcome you to the first episode in a series of videos that I plan to release focused on the Elicity Cognitive Trust Network Security Platform. In this episode, I'm going to touch on the traditional network segmentation and security methodologies then and now, as well as what Elicity is doing with our identity-based network security platform to enable your organization to reach your zero trust networking strategy goals in the most efficient, rapid, and effective way possible. If you've seen any of my videos in the past, you'll know that they're very informative, succinct, but quite informal. So I make them fun, stick around, I'm glad to have you here. Let's get started. Let's go back about 10 years. Traditionally, when we talked about network segmentation on-prem, it was really to limit the blast radius for network failures. I can't tell you how many projects I was put on as a delivery architect focused on segmenting the network because of all the network failures that they had experienced in the organization. So it was less about attacks, more about network failures. And when it came to network security on-prem, it was all about building this really secure, hardened, impenetrable wall on the outside of the organization so that nobody could get in. But once you were in, whether that was legitimately or illegitimately, you had access to way more than you should have access to. Whether you were a contractor, a guest, a corporate user, an IoT device, unmanaged or managed, it was hard to identify and build the rule sets and policies that made it efficient to harden the inside of the network. So a lot of people kind of, kind of just let it go. I'll tell you what, when I first started at Elicity, the first couple months here, I did over 10 interviews with large organizations. I'm talking about organizations that everybody knows the names of. And I talked to their network security personnel to figure out what were they doing internally to harden the network. And I'm gonna be honest with you, as sad as it is, a lot of them had no answer. They either gave up on it or they had implemented solutions that took years to get in place and they didn't get all of the benefits out of them. A lot has changed in the last decade, right? So what are we trying to solve for now? Carpeted space, east-west, north-south security and segmentation. More specifically, securing access for managed and unmanaged IoT devices. I'm talking about devices that we've just thrown on the network willy-nilly in the last 10 years, cameras and badge readers and whatnot that really only need to access specific servers on the network or cloud resources or users. Not everything. We've just thrown it on networks and they really have access to anything on that particular network. So there's a big difference between on and off security, like you'd get in a traditional network access control versus least privileged access, where it's very specific to what they need to access. We also have to think about how do we secure full-time employees that we trust? contractors and guests as they move back and forth from one office to another, from branches to the data center to different locations around the world. We have to deal with the threats that come from lateral movement within the network, like data exfiltration attempts or ransomware. We have to think about identifying a wide range of unmanaged entities dynamically. We have to secure remote access to the network. We have to secure workload to workload. We have to figure out how do we do all this and still have full visibility. There's a lot on our plate as network security architects that we need to figure out. That begs the question, why don't traditional methods of network security solve for all these things I just mentioned earlier? When I say traditional network security methods, I'm talking about firewalls and all those network access control solutions that are out there today and VPNs, network segmentation features like VRFs and VLANs and private VLANs and ACLs. Why doesn't any of that cut it for this day and age? And it really comes down to three main things, identity, policy, and the distribution of that policy across the entire network architecture. Let's start with identity. Traditional methods of network security had little to no way of effectively gleaning identity of all the different things on the network. People, applications, devices that were managed and unmanaged. They really had no advanced way to glean the identity. You know, people started using 802.1x and that's been used for some time now, but it was a pain to configure. It was managed port by port and organizations really only went so far as implementing 802.1x 
for wireless client-based identity because that was the easiest way to deploy it and you know you could get quick time to value uh, for all the work you put into it and so yeah I get it I, but it really it stopped there everybody else would fall back to maybe Mac authentication bypass or other methods that were very manual and what I experienced most of the time was that whenever customers would have problems with identity or security uh, on the network the first thing they would do is go in and shut off 802.1x or remove Mac authentication bypass and then let it flow let it run and then nobody would come back and fix it or patch it up and make it work properly and so we had all these holes that were being made because it was impossible to manage these large networks using things like 802.1x and MAP. On top of that, none of these traditional mechanisms had any advanced integrations with identity providers or advanced gleaning mechanisms to pick up protocols that were unknown or unmanaged devices, things that were just really unknown to the network. How do you understand what's out there if you don't have the intelligence baked into your network security solution? Another thing to consider is that a lot of these solutions are agent-based, which means that it doesn't scale and that it doesn't solve for devices that have embedded operating systems or legacy devices and other unmanaged IoT devices on the network. And in some large organizations, we found that that can be up to five devices per user. And what about the significant manual effort to deploy and manage these traditional network access control solutions? Configuring things box by box, troubleshooting via CLI in many instances, it just does not work. If you're still doing things this way and not adopting the proven software-defined networking paradigm, you really need to rethink your entire strategy. It just will not scale to manage VRFs and IP ACLs and firewalls and NAC solutions all across your entire network. It doesn't work. We've seen it time and time again. None of these solutions are constantly checking to make sure that they're up to date or offering the least privileged access or changing and adapting as apps and users and devices change. They're so rigid and network centric focused that it does not work in this day and age. We need to move past point in time authorization and more towards a continuous verification model, which really is a key foundation of a truly software defined perimeter. You know what's funny and kind of sad is that I have former colleagues in the professional services world that have been working on the same network access control projects for years. And I'm not talking about one, I'm talking about multiple network access control projects for years. And this is not unheard of. Many of the customers that we speak to tell us that the time to value with the traditional network access control solutions that they bought into is unacceptable. Let's take your favorite NAC solution as an example. It doesn't offer any continuous verification, no real intelligence baked into it like AI or machine learning to help secure the network and adapt as things change. It isn't cloud native meaning it's a pain to deploy on-prem. You have to deal with hardware and the infrastructure. You might have to change your network architecture. You might have to deploy this manually across all the edges of your network. The time to value with these solutions is always stalled due to the lack of dynamic discovery and all the manual intervention required to get it going. Once you do get it running, you're now faced with having to build policy. And building policy in these traditional methods was not easy. It required in-depth knowledge of all the networks and traffic flows and the things that need to be secured. Nothing was automated. Nothing was offered to you from the platform itself. The lack of centralized visibility once you've deployed this NAC creates another dark place in the network. Lastly, these policies you do end up creating are hard to distribute across the entire enterprise and make it relevant for all of the different venues out there, the data centers, the small and large campuses, the industrial and the OT environments, the medical environments, the cloud, the remote access, policies were not relevant across them all. Let me show you a more optimal way to do this. At this point, it should be pretty obvious that the complexity that we face today has outstripped legacy methods of perimeter-based network security. I'm now going to give you exactly what you need to focus on for your enterprise to be successful in this journey. We need to limit malicious lateral network traffic. We need to focus on providing least privileged access for third parties, but it needs to be simple to build these policies and really easy and scalable to distribute these policies across any venue across your network architecture. 
Identification of anything and everything on a network should be seamless and accurate. Once identified, continuous verification and authentication of these identities should be occurring. And lastly, we need complete real-time visibility and audit controls from this solution. Enter Elicity. Now I have to start with saying how proud and excited I am to be a part of this organization. Elicity has some of the sharpest people I've ever come across in my 15 years of being a part of this industry. 22 different patents and growing, and we're constantly innovating. It's incredible. From the beginning, our platform team has been focused on deployment simplicity and the intuitiveness and automation of policy creation. We also have a focus on visibility. The network is nothing if it's a dark place. We need to be able to understand what's going on anytime, anywhere. And lastly, data and analytics is a core component of our platform as we take the information and feed it back into the system to make it more intelligent. Elicity is all about cloud delivered simplicity, resiliency, and scalability. There's no additional hardware required. It's SaaS offered. And because of this, our customers are realizing rapid time to value. And I can't overstate how important that is to organizations these days. Elicity is fully integrated with existing CMDBs and IDPs so we can glean identity from your users' databases immediately. It can be a fully virtual deployment or if you wanna add some hardware, we can offer that as well. Here's the best part of it. You've already deployed a network edge across your entire infrastructure. We can enable enforcement points across your entire network edge, let's say Catalyst 9000 series switches, in minutes and get you to realize the value of zero trust networking faster than anything else out there on the market. You can do all this without disrupting your network at all. So for brownfield deployments, this is critical. Elicity has the most comprehensive identity engine. We can identify anything under the sun, IOMT, IOT, OT, users, applications, it doesn't matter. If it's communicating on a network, we'll be able to identify it. And then we'll automatically classify these devices, users, and apps into the appropriate policies that you've either pre-created or that have been created automatically so that it's zero touch for the administrator. Imagine how amazing this would be for large enterprises. As things come on and off the network, immediately they're classified, placed into a policy, and that policy is enforced. Forced. This is critical. Policy tied to network constructs means the correct policy has to be translated manually for each network environment. Policy defined around asset identity, however, reflects true business logic and can be translated in real time by the system for different network environments. I have to touch on the power of how granular our policies can be and how they can stop network access with extreme prejudice. An example of this would be maybe a contractor coming onto your network and you wanna build a policy that says, I need to identify that specific contractor at a specific period of time of the day using a specific type of device on a specific network. You can get so granular so that your network policy is extremely effective. We are continuously doing verification and authentication of all the user's devices and apps on the network. We can look at things like EDR integration, if a user has EDR installed or not, and what policy they should get if they have EDR installed or active or not. The visibility in our platform is unparalleled. We can provide robust visibility into every single traffic flow going across the Elicity secured network. Of course, there's an API that you can leverage if you need to integrate with your own SIMs or anything like that. And lastly, Elicity collects contextual knowledge over time. This is the cognitive component of our solution. We can take this information and feed it back into the system to make it more intelligent. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope I've gotten you just as excited about this technology as I am. Everything you see here on the screen, we're going to go through in this video series. So subscribe, share it, and comment so I know what your thoughts are. Looking forward to talking to you in the next one. Take care.